Hey friend, welcome to my editing series on how to edit a vlog from beginning to end. In the previous episode, I quickly showed you how to set up the correct settings for a sequence. And now in this episode, it's actually a lot of fun because this is where we take all our footage and we start to make it into a story. I'm really excited to share with you guys the process that I actually go through to edit all of my vlogs. Okay, so where I start at with the edit is the first camera that did the documenting of events that took place. So usually that's the camera that you're sort of doing your talking thing to and you're getting a little B-roll moments and tying things together. If there's things like time lapses that I shot or other types of things like that on other cameras, or in my case, some drone images, uh, I worry about those ones later. So I open up the folder that has that footage in it and I just start going through it in chronological order. Uh, so I select the clip by double clicking on it. It pops up into your source window here. Then by hitting space bar, it starts to play back the clip. And by doing that, you can then use the I key to start an in point in that clip, play through even more. And then you can hit O, which will create an end point. And then you can actually hit triangle. <laughs> Why do they call it triangle comma? And it will drop it down into your sequence where your playhead is. That's important. If your playhead is over here, Watch what happens, I hit comment, it drops it in in between that and chops it in half. You really don't want that to happen. So I use those shortcuts and I use the L key to start playing the footage and I double click it if I want to play back the footage faster. So I do that systematically through all of my shots in order and just drop it into the sequence as fast as I can, just grabbing those usable moments. When I run into the bits where I was actually like talking to the camera or where I was talking to another person, often when I'm talking to the camera, I actually do it in like multiple takes because I totally mess up and I get flustered and I get nervous. So what I do with those, instead of trying to find the best moment now when I'm cutting all the selects, I actually just drop that entire thing down into the sequence. So we've just run into one of those right here. My second video clip is a video clip of me talking. So instead of listening that through, I actually just drop that down by hitting comma right away. And then I move on to the next clip. Oh, well, look at that. I did another talking bit. So at the beginning of this vlog, I'm doing a lot of talking. Wow. Um, to see, but Okay, here we are at clip number nine of this vlog, and they're all talking clips so far, so I haven't cut any B-roll moments out. Uh, but number nine is actually a little time lapse, so I drop that in at its entirety, and right away I go in and I change the speed and duration because I know it's a time lapse. I'm going to change it to around uh, 600 times speed and get it nice and small like that again. But I'm gonna go into super fast mode here, cut out all my B-roll selections, leave any bits that have talking in their full length, and we're gonna chop this down real fast. The key here is to go fast. So let's get through this. So in this clip here, it's actually a pretty long clip, but I'm still only gonna pull out little moments. So I'm not gonna drop the whole clip down, even though the whole clip is there, and I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna select the little moments that I actually want to be in my edit. So again, pressing I at the start, pressing O at the finish, and hitting comma to drop it into your sequence. Okay, so I'm entirely done dropping in all my selects from that first camera, so you can see it all here in my timeline. In this particular vlog, <laughs> I got my van stuck and was getting it unstuck. So there's a lot of video time lapses where I just let the camera roll. And so the timeline is actually pretty lengthy because I didn't chop out little moments of that. I'm gonna chop those out later for what makes sense to the music that I'm choosing. So I have 50 minutes of footage here in my timeline, which is a little bit more than normal, but still not that unusual. All my little select moments are cut up. All my talking moments are just thrown in there in chronological order. And uh, that's kind of how I do the first main camera. Then I move on to sort of the special insert shot. So like the stuff that I shot with my phone to give more context if I was just getting these little B-roll moments or if I had a cool drone aerial. So right now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna select the best drone moments that I have. I'm gonna actually use one of the drone shots for my opening titles. So I'm gonna put that at the very beginning of the sequence and then I'm gonna put all the other stuff later so I can decide where I wanna cut it in when I get further in with this edit. Now that I've got my selects from the drone, I'm gonna do my selects from the iPhone. Still just adding it down into the same sequence. Uh, 
Okay, so in this sequence here, I now have all the media I'm gonna use in the edit from all my different cameras, and it's all there in chronological order. And now's the part where I'm gonna start refining. Okay, so we're gonna press the plus key to make everything a little bigger. There's a few things I wanna show you about this timeline real quick if you're new to it. Uh, if you select the top of a track and drag it a little bigger, you can see the thumbnails in, and yeah, I'm gonna do that down here. So I see the audio waveforms. And also, since I'm done using my source monitor for picking my selects, I'm actually gonna drag my program panel over top of that. So now I got one big program window instead of having a program and a source window. I do that fairly frequently. I'll just drag my program window over here if I'm using uh, both or I'll drag the program window over top of the source panel. So that way I'm utilizing the most screen real estate possible. So let's go through and cut all the talking bits down and start sculpting the story. I'm going to cut all the talking bits down to only the talking dialogue that I want. So I'm going to go through that process now. Reminder here as I'm doing this quick is when you press L to play, you can press it twice and it'll speed things up. So I often do that in my talking bits because again, I'm trying to go fast. Okay, I'm not that far in and I already got another thing I wanna show you. If you wanna chop a section out, you wanna use what's called the razor tool. So over here, you have your little tools you can select. I actually never usually select them from there. I just use the shortcut. So I press C to get my chop tool. And the section I'm chopping out is there and you're gonna click that. And if you hit E, if you set that as your shortcut, watch my video, or if you hit delete and you can select that gap and hit delete again, it'll ripple everything forward. Uh, and that's the reason why we don't have a song in yet because if you're doing edits like that with a song, everything gets really funny. So no song yet, resist the urge, no song. Okay guys, so continue going through your entire edit and cutting your talking moments down to the essential. Just cut out all the fluff or things that you said where you're just rambling and just get it down to the actual story that you want your vlog to be. That's what you're supposed to do in this process. Don't think too much about timing things to song. Don't overcomplicate it. The goal is to chop things down fast and to get things into the flow of events that you want to happen. Well, friend, I really hope you found this tutorial valuable. I had a blast creating it for you. I'd actually love it if you took a moment to help out what I'm doing. Maybe you actually just sent this video to a friend that you know wants to learn how to do some editing. That would mean a lot to me. You could actually send them to leftcoast.co slash edit a vlog. You could send them right there and they too can learn some of the great things that you are learning. And I'd really appreciate it if you could give back and do that. Until next time, guys, remember, life's better when you make stuff.